As science slowly unpeels the layers of mystery surrounding human life, certain behavior continues to confound. When members of the same sex are attracted to each other, all of the signs and signals are the same as in the opposite sexes, the nervous stammer, the fidgeting and mooning over each other. But the homosexual union cannot lead directly to reproduction. The origins of homosexuality elude those who study it, and those who live it are tangible examples of the unexplained. San Francisco in the late 70s simmered with sexual attraction. The city's large gay population was active and open about sex until the early 80s, when the AIDS virus shrilled its wake-up call. Out of survival, promiscuity gave way to caution. Many gay men were beginning to think more about forming serious relationships. That was the case for Wood Massey and Larry Brinkin. In 1983, Wood was finishing a graduate degree and wondering about his future. Larry's boyfriend had passed away suddenly two years earlier. Both men were ready to share their lives with someone special. The first sparks of attraction ignited at the gym. Wood is very handsome, and when I saw him at the YMCA, I saw all of him because I saw him in the aerobics class and then in the showers and everything. I really liked his body, and he has a wonderful face, his beautiful eyes, and I looked at his lips and they looked very kissable. That's very important to me because I love kissing. And Larry just seemed really cuddly to me. He was, I don't know, a little bit shorter than me and just, it, he just seemed like somebody I could hold in my arm. For months, Wood and Larry would smile at each other and occasionally say hello, but never anything more. Until one day when Wood finally built up the courage to ask Larry out on a date. Larry said yes and prompted by a deadly disease, the two of them agreed that this relationship would not be built on sex alone. That first date led to a second and a third. The intimacy that blossomed from their companionship was a novelty, especially for Wood, who found it much stronger than the fleeting euphoria of physical attraction. When I held him, it just was so, was so warm and fulfilling, you know, there was nothing it was almost not even sexual, you know. It was like just this kind of like embryonic love or something. I mean, it, our, our love took a while to grow into like a really deep, profound love, but it started right away. Their relationship was tested while Wood went to San Diego for three years to get a master's degree. When he returned, it was as if the two were never apart. But more obstacles lay in wait. Wood and Larry were content to spend time together, shoring up their relationship. Until one day when Wood decided he wanted a more serious commitment to Larry. He broached the subject during a romantic weekend getaway. We took long walks at sunset on the beach and hot tubs up in the mountains and talked about what it would be like to live together and if we really wanted to do that and if we wanted to commit to each other. He proposed. I mean, he actually said that. He said, we should get married. And I said, what do you mean get married? We're not allowed to get married. <laughs> but he said, well, I mean, I want us to commit to each other. And I, it was hard for me to really say, okay, I'm ready to do that and live together. But I did. Because in effect, it was almost an ultimatum. <laughs> I mean, he, that was kind of an he ultimatum. didn't quite threaten, but he pretty much said, well, if we're not gonna live together and really have a stronger relationship, then I don't know, maybe I'll, look around. And I said, oh, well, I don't want that. One stormy afternoon, Wood and Larry sat on the beach and read the vows they had written for each other. It would have to take the place of a wedding because even in the progressive atmosphere of San Francisco, same-sex marriages were not recognized by law. We sat down and said things, you know, like, you know, that I would, I'll, I'll never hurt you and that I'll always try to be, you know, there when you need me. And uh, we had a whole list of vows and, and I'll always try to respect your privacy and, and your individualism and your need for, for, for being alone. Um, and that we try to have good arguments, good principled arguments. In 1991, the political climate changed and the city passed a domestic partners law to officially recognize relationships and grant spousal benefits and other legal rights to same-sex couples. 
On February 14th, Larry and Wood joined 200 other couples for a ceremony at City Hall. It was just the most wonderful, emotional thing. I mean, there were people there who were elderly, who, when they were announced, it said they had been together 25 and 30 years, sometimes more. And uh, it was really, really wonderful. To Larry and Wood, having a committed relationship, a marriage in their own hearts, meant for better or worse. The greatest test of that pledge came in 1993, when Larry needed open heart surgery and Wood faced the possibility of losing him. I was really afraid that he would die in the operating room or something, and um, I went into one of the bathrooms in the hospital and just sort of collapsed into to tears and just a muddle on the floor. The whole recovery process took a while and was painful and difficult. And Wood was like this angel. He was this angel. I mean, he was always there in the hospital. I'd wake up, he'd be there, and he had a job. But he was always there. He did everything for me. When I came home, he just did everything. It really did deepen my love for him immensely. For almost 14 years, Wood and Larry have weathered separation, sickness, and all the smaller trials in between. They anticipate, as any married couple does, that they will grow old together. Homosexuality adds a bewildering element to the evolutionary mix, since same-sex couples cannot have children. How does same-sex attraction fit into that equation? Are gay people intrinsically different from heterosexuals? While writing their book, Sex Appeal, Kate and Douglas Botting found no significant difference between gay and straight people. Sex appeal is basically brain sex in the sense that everything we perceive about another person um, <clears throat> is logged in the brain. It's the sex you are, not the orientation that you are. So if you're attracted to men and you're a man, you're still going to be attracted towards good-looking men. If you're a woman and you're a lesbian, you're going to be attracted towards women who offer you something else, a, a resource of a kind, a, a, um, a support or a kindness or something. Some studies looked beyond behavior and into the brain chemistry of gay people. We've got the same brain physiology for lust, the same brain physiology for infatuation, and the same brain physiology for attachment. No matter who you fall in love with, the brain physiology will be the same if you fall in love with another woman or if you fall in love with a man. Determined to pursue the origins of homosexuality, scientists and researchers have investigated the size of a gay man's hypothalamus, a small gland in the brain, and the X chromosome of the mother, to no avail. Researchers also dig for clues in the environment. In Larry Brinken's experience, having been gay for as long as he can remember, these theories don't seem valid. My deep-seated feeling is that I was born gay, and I think most people are. Um, I've never known anyone that said, oh, I think I'll be gay. I'm one of six kids. We all had the same parents, the same household. Um, why am I gay and they're not gay? The elusive questions posed by homosexuality open the door to a more transcendent definition of sexual attraction, not weighed down by science. Evolution gives us the rules we're supposed to follow. And then just for sport, we like to vary those rules and elaborate them as much as possible. I think love is something instinctive. And it doesn't really matter whether it is between same sex or opposite sex. Um, the essential emotion, love, is the same. So many of the symptoms of desire and love are identical in heterosexuals and homosexuals. But the origins of same sex attraction elude both philosopher and scientist. They may yet uncover a gene, a chemical, or a behavioral clue. But until then, attraction that does not cross genders will remain in a corner marked unexplained. <laughs>